Over the last couple of years, I have been receiving a steady stream of requests to review a tube amplifier or a valve amplifier. But I did not want to tackle a single-ended triode, not because I have anything against them, but generally they're quite low powered and if I was going to tackle a tube amp, I wanted one that I could use with a broader range of loudspeakers. So I wanted generally a push-pull model with a decent amount of watts per channel. So I reached out to Upscale Audio in the USA to see if they would send me their top of the line integrated amp as made by Prima Luna. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. This video is brought to you by Rune 2.0, the revolutionary music player designed for true music fanatics. Click to runelabs.com for more information. Welcome back everybody. Yes, the Evo 400 from Prima Luna is an integrated amplifier but this is an all tube amplifier. It is not a hybrid and it sells for 5,600 US dollars. On deck, we have eight EL34 tubes. We also have four 12 AU7 tubes for the pre-stage and an additional two 12 AU7 tubes for the driver stage. And if you wanna know the differences between those tube types and what they do in this amplifier, I'll put a link in the description box below. Tube biasing here on the Evo 400 is automatic. So that means we don't have to fuss with a screwdriver and a multimeter every month or so to make sure they're biased properly. But Prima Luna has apparently designed their auto biasing circuit to improve the sound of this amplifier. And if you wanna know how, again, I'll put a link in the description box below. And a red LED alerts us when any tube develops a fault, as happened to me a couple of months ago, and I asked Prima Luna to quickly send me a replacement tube. They sent me a whole set actually in case I needed them. And changing a tube is just like changing a light bulb. You carefully pull out the old one and then carefully slot in the new one. Now I'm told that the toroidal transformers and the output transformers on the Evo 400 are tucked away on the underside out of sight and they are wound in-house which i'm also told contributes hugely to the sound of this amplifier so too apparently does the point-to-point -point wiring inside the amp which means that it isn't just the tubes that do the heavy lifting with sound quality here talking of heavy lifting this is one hell of a heavy amplifier it weighs 31 kilograms that's probably the heaviest amplifier that i can remember having here in Germany. And you might be asking how powerful is the Evo 400 integrated? Well, that depends upon which of its two operational modes you have engaged. So the ultra linear mode uses more global negative feedback to give us up to 70 watts per channel. That's pretty powerful. Whereas the triode mode dials down the use of global negative feedback for I think what most manufacturers aim for there is greater signal purity, but then the power output also drops in this case to around 38 watts per channel. And those two modes are remote control switchable, so you can change it up from the listening position. I should say something about the remote control actually, because it's, it's this, can you hear the buttons? It's, I don't know, it's pretty basic Chinese stuff in that I've seen remotes like this coming with $900 Chinese made tube amplifiers. I'm not particularly crash hot on this really. From a personal point of view, I much prefer the cheap plastic remotes if you're gonna cheap out on your remote. Now I know the counter argument. The counter argument is, oh, we didn't spend any money on the remote. We put it all into the amplifier to improve its sound. But frankly, I don't buy that. I really wish manufacturers, and it's not just Prima Luna that I think have suffered from this kind of issue, I really wish manufacturers would make sure that their remote is of a similar quality to the main product. It should reflect the quality of that main product. But that's just me, that's my personal opinion. You might feel differently. If you do, please let us know in the comments below. Politely, of course. And whilst I'm having a bit of a grumble, let's look at the manual. It's stapled in the top left corner. It's just a bunch of photocopied A4 bits of paper. I think Prima Luna can do much better here. Let's talk about some practicalities. So knob feel 
on the Alps volume pot and on the source selector switch is perfectly fine. It's not above expectation, it's not below expectation, it's right down the middle. What is, I think, possibly above expectation here is how the active input is isolated from the others, so the other inactive inputs, by the use of relays. So only the active input's relay stays closed and all the others are left open. And why would you want that? Well, that essentially prevents signal bleed between inputs, which I think is a fairly decent consideration by the engineers at Prima Luna. And of course, a tube amplifier like this one, like other tube amplifiers, runs pretty damn warm. And I gotta say, it's too warm for me to run for more than an hour or so during the, the summer months here in Berlin. And in the winter months when I've run it, because I've had this thing for like nine months or so, you know, I've been pretty slow with this one for various reasons, but yeah, during the winter, when I had the Evo 400 integrated running, I turned my radiator off. I didn't need it on. And then when I turn the amplifier off at night, then the radiator goes back on to keep the room nice and toasty. So what I'm essentially saying is, is that the Evo 400 integrated can stand in for a, ba a basic room, I was gonna say Heizung, because that's the German word, but like a radiator to keep your room nice and toasty in the winter. But yeah, some are listening, I'm not so sure. Now for my listening sessions, what I did was I used the Lingdorf TDAI 3400 in network streamer mode, so a line level signal out of it into the Prima Luna. And then I switched over the, the Lingdorf into preamp mode in order to feed an NAD Masters M23 amplifier because that was the amplifier that I was using most of the time when I was doing most of my listening to this Evo 400 a few months ago. And that set up my side-by-side -side comparison for this video. And the sound of the Evo 400 is not the cliched view of many EL34 amplifiers in that it does not sound thick or buttery, not at all. This amplifier is highly resolving. It has excellent dynamic prowess, especially with microdynamics. And even with 85 dB speakers, like the Kaya S12 from Vivid Audio. See, this is why I wanted a more powerful amplifier to drive these less efficient loudspeakers. And the Prima Luna is at times a zippy sounding amplifier, but to a point, because it's not as zippy sounding as the NAD Masters M23. So instead of being thick or buttery, we do get some of the more, I guess, traditionally perceived elements of tube amplifiers, and they manifest as, Basically, the Evo 400 seems to lend music a, a sort of golden glow that the NAD does not. And that means we hear sounds bloom into life quite beautifully, and then they also fall away quite beautifully again, whereas the NAD is a bit more matter of fact in that regard. And related to that, we also enjoy vapor trail-like instrumental decay from the Evo 400 integrated. And that decay is rich with tone color, as we might expect, but it's not syrupy. This is definitely not a thick, congealed, chunky, thick sounding amplifier, no. But perhaps more than anything, more than any other quality, the Prima Luna has a powerful sound, but it's also extremely laid back when it delivers that power. It doesn't invite us to lean forward into the music as much as the NAD Masters M23 does. See what I mean? The Prima Luna. Yeah, it wants us to kind of sink into our seat and relax. And operating in triode mode, its repose is even more laid back. This is not an amplifier for anybody wanting a sound that comes across as urgent or in a hurry. Furthermore, the bass from the Prima Luna is big and punchy, but it's not as rigorously physical as the bass from the NAD amplifier, nor is it as crisp or as grippy. And when paired with the Vivid Audio loudspeakers, there were times when I would have happily traded in some of the Prima Luna's beauty and majesty for a little more urgency from the sound. So at that point, that's when I really thought maybe the Evo 400 integrated would be a better match for the Klipsch Forte 4 than the Vivid Audio Kaya S12.
And that hunch, predictably, proved to be correct. So with the Klipsch Forte 4, the Prima Luna brought more substance to the mid-range in the Klipsch loudspeakers. And with the Klipsch, the Prima Luna proved to be a much smoother amp up top than the NAD. But obviously being a Klipsch loudspeaker system, the dynamics are still there and they're still there to die for basically. are just wonderful, the dynamics we get from a Klipsch loudspeaker. And I think with the Prima Luna, there was nothing there that compromised that, not at all. You see, the Prima Luna matches the NAD on jump factor in sort of jumping the sound into the room, but it does so from a, a position of more gentle repose. So it sort of jumps it back from here rather than being more forward from here. And the Prima Luna's bass definition wasn't as soft as it was with the Kaya S12 stand mount loudspeakers. But because the Evo 400's top end is super smooth, a bit like a pebble that's been polished by millions of years of wave action, it means that the Evo 400 doesn't really reveal or expose surface textures as cleanly as the NAD amplifier. So on the one hand, the Prima Luna doesn't have the crisp fried edge definition that we get from the NAD. But on the other hand, it's not as matter of fact sounding as the Masters M23. So you have to pick your poison. So for example, the NAD scrapes more gravel from Tom Waits's voice, but the Prima Luna, I think, is better suited to the sounds of the 70s like Fleetwood Mac or the Doobie Brothers or Steely Dan. And in fact, if the Evo 400 has a parallel in the music world, it's gaucho because it's the oral equivalent of taking a bubble bath that's been sprinkled with glitter. Now there is an analogy for you that I never thought I would ever say on camera, but it's in my script. So here we are. <laughs> But there's a bit of an unexpected twist with this story, and that comes in the form of headphone listening. Because I found that the headphone output on the Prima Luna is absolutely fantastic, and a terrific match, I mean a terrific match, for the Focal Stellia, whose jump factor and exciting dynamics proved to be a very sort of copacetic fit with the sound of the Evo 400 from Prima Luna. That was a real surprise for me because the Prima Luna's ease and top end smoothness kind of takes the edge and the urgency out of the Stelia. So if you think those headphones are just too much, like too uh for you, then you need to hear them with a tube amp like the Evo 400. It's just a wonderful, wonderful match. The downside of that is having the Prima Luna circuits slightly audible hum, no longer in the speaker, but right next to your ear. But I'll take that because the Evo 400 makes the Stelia from Focal sound less mechanical. So again, it's a matter of picking your poison or choosing according to your priorities. And I'll happily take the better sound of the Stelia from the Prima Luna and tolerate the slight presence of circuit hum if it means I can get that good sound. So now we ask, who is the Evo 400 for? Well, clearly it's for somebody who can accommodate its fairly strong heat radiation. Secondly, this amp would be well suited to somebody who wants a very robust and powerful sound, but also one that sounds extremely laid back. This is one of the smoothest amplifiers that I think I've heard to date, but it still has plenty of dynamic punch and it still has an abundance of tone color. Alternatively, you might have loudspeakers that crave the Prima Luna's very laid back disposition. Those speakers might be exciting and forward, like the Klipsch Forte 4, and also like the Zoo DWX that you see in red behind me. So yeah, if you've got a keen sounding loudspeaker, one that sort of really pushes sound into the room, and maybe you wanna dial it back a bit, then the Prima Luna would be a good fit for you. And it's also for somebody who wants an incredible sounding headphone amplifier albeit with the compromise of a small amount of circuit hum. 
And I'm not talking about mechanical hum from the transformers. I'm talking about what we hear through the speakers and through the headphones. And obviously being a tube amplifier, the Evo 400 is also for somebody who wants to change up the flavor by changing out the tubes. That's one of the beauties of owning a tube amp is you can change its sound and push it in certain directions depending upon what tubes you insert into it. But I haven't swapped out the tubes on this one. I don't have any here to do that. And besides, my time is limited to just assessing this amplifier in its stock form as it comes out of the factory. So if you liked this video, if you thought it was entertaining or informative or a bit of both, then please consider giving us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards hi-fi reviewing in that, I'm prepared to tackle things that aren't necessarily my flavor, but my, well, most definitely will be other people's flavor, as is the case with this amplifier, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Hello, me again. You're watching this video on YouTube, but if you are watching it on Patreon right now, you would be watching a series of bloopers right here instead of me talking to you about this very thing, which is very meta, isn't it? So yeah, I would love it if you would consider supporting this channel by, yeah, just signing up for Patreon, even if it's just for one month, just to buy me a cup of coffee or something, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much.